All right, let's just pop into it, huh? Red Black Midrange. We played a Red Black Control deck the other day. That was topping out at Massacre Worm. That felt good in the creature matchups, but felt a little bit lackluster against Nexus and Ramp and things where you're trying to race. This deck has some very similar ideas within it, but it's a little bit lower to the ground. Notably, it's starting on Stitcher Supplier and Knight of the Ebon Legion here down in the one slot. We're maxing out on Phoenix of the Ash, and we're trying a few copies of Liliana, Waker of the Dead here as a kind of bit of top end that can also pressure our opponent out of the game. Mila TK with the 50 three months it's a really long time i have seven months to figure out a, a five-year sub icon we're gonna we're gonna figure it out thank you for the absurd amount of support this card seems neat this time i think this card's probably playable it feels a lot like a kind of fixed liliana fixed liliana the veil in a way it's neat that her plus one has the ability to hurt the opponent when they run out of cards that way you could sit there plusing her she also has an emblem that says at the beginning of combat in your turn put a creature card from a graveyard in the play into play under your control it gains haste so kind of an ability that ends the game but also not one that ends it immediately like a lot of like the more expensive planeswalker ultimates we got a couple of chandra heart of fire here at the top end too as a little bit of extra interaction slash reach as well and then also some card advantage for us so let's go ahead and pop on into some matches here with this and uh, see how it feels Two years doesn't feel that long. Hope the new girl is doing well and you guys are safe and enjoy being outnumbered. Thanks for the thanks for the two years, Slayer. But we're doing we're doing all right. Yeah, there's some there's some tension between the new Liliana's downtick and our escape cards, but I'm hoping that with our various things like Ashiok that fill the graveyard up, we'll be able to uh, leverage our escape cards and her minus three pretty consistently still. Hoping to run some lands off here. Red source lets us Phoenix on three, black source lets us Ashiok on three. This is magic, so I assume keeping a two lander on the draw, we're going to miss our third land drop. Holy gosh, not only did we hit the land, but it's both of our colors. I don't know what to do with my hands, chat. Don't even know what to do with my hands. Let's take their shatter away here. Uh, this is a land, I believe. Again, Magic Arena is bugged in the latest patch, and it randomly hides one of the cards in their hand. I need to start remembering to take pictures of their hands like Magic Online circa four years ago. I think I'd rather phoenix to start their graveyards not anywhere close to flipping this and i think i just want to put as much pressure into play as possible here review teferi will be constructed playable i think that card's gonna be super reasonable All right, so we're definitely attacking here. The question becomes, do I prioritize getting Ashiok going or getting Liliana going? Liliana has the upside of chewing through their resources. Ashiok has the upside of helping us find a Croxa to kill them faster. I feel like the answer is kill them faster. This could also be a counterspell turn, though. Like, they could have Thassa's Intervention. Yeah, maybe maybe in light of Intervention, I'm better off leading on Liliana. If I, if I want this to resolve the most... Leading on this to bait the counterspell makes the most sense. The Raisin Bar were here. Yo. Or are they going to block the other one? That makes sense. It actually works out pretty okay for us because I get to uh, I get to play this plus they discard a card from their hand. <laughs> Ruining your day is going to Although I suppose price. making them discard here means that they get to flip search for Iskanta next turn. So like that's a bit of a concern. Oh, they discarded Nexus, so they don't get to flip search. That's good for us. Because Nexus shuffles back into their deck. There's the Uro. And again, Uro's another reason why 
waiting for waiting on Ashiok and leading on a Liliana to bait their counter spell on that turn four was probably correct. Um, with Uro in their bin, I think I need to hold on to this Murderous Rider, so we'll ditch the Citrus Supplier here. We're doing we'll go ahead and escape fire. this. Crack them for four. So they're at seven now, so they can even keep this top card and flip this over. I assume we're going to see Uro, or see them flip this and then Uro escape this turn. We'll murder us right at that and we'll see if we're able to run them down or not. Yeah, yeah, this card this card is like basically fixed the layout of the bill. And by fixed I mean one that's like slightly less busted. Huh. Do I give up this Ashiok in my hand? I don't know if I'm supposed to give up this Ashiok in my hand. I feel like the answer is yes. You think too much. They discarded a Shatter. Okay. So if they have one more card to put into here, they get to they get to escape Croxa. Okay, we have like Elspeth conquers death here. Why would they shock for the fifth land? If five mana it's free, maybe. Step free. Okay. Wonderful. We'll see them tuck this in. I'm known for my All right. So untapped land is lethal here. Croxa uh, also lethal. Yep. A little bit of pressure and disruption there. Solid, solid mix. Uh, this is not a Chandra Heart of Fire matchup. Probably a duress matchup. This is a goblin rune blaster matchup. Libation seems fine. I think I'm gonna cut the murderous riders. They're a little slow. I still have Liliana and Libation to kill Uro. I have Agonizing Remorse to tag and I have Ashiok to exile the graveyard. Need two more cuts here. It's just Meyer Triton. It doesn't. It fills up. Filling up the graveyard's nice, but doesn't trade with anything. We play Meyer Triton. I guess it depends on what we draw. If we draw a red source. Hmm. So I could Croxa here 
And if I Croxa and then Ashiok and I hit a second Red Source, we can escape Croxa on four, which is really nice. I think that's probably the play. Let's do this so that way we can try and escape it on four. So again, regardless of who Ashiok targets with their mill, the opponent's graveyard gets exiled. So good at keeping the Uros down, good at keeping their their uh, Ascantas down. pressure their hand. I think Crocs is probably the best way to do that. The white mana doesn't really do much in the short term, right? I suppose if I blast them and they don't have another land though, they can't Nexus of Fate, which is nice. I like, they only have two cards left in hand though as well, so I feel like there's real value in pressuring their hand here. There's a lot of different permutations that the way this turn could play out. I think, I think... The permutations where we pressure their hand is ideal. Uro just gains three life and cantrips. Doesn't really accomplish a lot. Well, they are missing a land drop here. Okay, so this is going to be fantastic next turn. Let's start by attacking here, so so we get the card out of their hand. I do I do miss an attack with Rune Blaster this way, but it means my Rune Blaster doesn't get counterspelled. So anyways, I came in blasted. Mill them because we can't escape. Uh, putting cards in my bin for Liliana Waker of the Dead to Kill an Uro down the line is potentially still worthwhile. We have that Aether Gust here. Next, so let's close the game out real quick, anyways. They're exactly dead, right? This is six, and then she does three. Okay. We're one. We're one short on Bora, but the Liliana in hand. Let's just do the extra one. Seeing seeing that Graf Digger's Cage hit play makes me realize I did the same thing I did the other night, which is I built this and didn't put any ways to kill artifacts in it. It's really sad, but Devil still doesn't have a borderless option, because most of my deck is borderless, but I probably I probably want some but devils here, huh? Killing uh both Ember Cleave and the other one is pretty important. Graft Digger's Cage on occasion sounds sounds fine to kill. Just split it with Murderous Rider in the main deck. Excited for a breed. Not, not really. Like, is a breed super playable? I feel I feel like the answer to that question is no. Put 
the third one in the sideboard. I guess I guess a braid is good against. I guess a braid is good against uh, 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 the red aggressive decks with Embercleave, but in a lot of other places, I think uh, Bedevil tends to be better. Really haven't much experience with Pioneer these days. Haven't touched that format since like Theros happened. Das good. Thanks for the brand new Prime support. I appreciate that. Welcome. Thanks for keeping me around. That's if we get a braid. I mean, we're guaranteed to get a braid. Pioneer is coming to this platform eventually, so eventually a braid will exist in the on the platform. With Pelt Collector on one, I actually lead on Fabled Passage here, so I can guaranteed play Meyer Triton on two. Get a chance to test out our ways to kill Ember Cleave here this round, which is nice. From the Braum deck you submitted. Sounds good, Scissor. Thanks for the biddies. I appreciate the support. Get that added after I'm done today. What type of hate bear punishes ramp? <laughs> oh, oh, my sweet summer child. Hate bears don't punish ramp. Hate bears die to ramp. That's how, that's how magic works. Welcome. Welcome to Thunderdome. Enjoy your stay. Punish the ramp decks. It's 2020. We don't punish ramp decks in magic. We play them. What if I just like double crocs of them here? And this way, if they have a cleave in hand, they need to draw a land off the top. All right, the game has ended. It's 2020, imagine rap decks have encounter play, right? Those of you that haven't been paying attention to the Roots of Magic for the last year. We're not, we're not big on, we're not big on counter play these days. All right, so definitely want all my cheap Cheap-ish removal spells. Agonizing Remorse comes out here. I think Chandra comes out here. Pretty expensive and slow. Need one more trim here. Would I rather trim the third Liliana or the second Ashiok? I think it's the third Liliana. We cast Chandra at the set. We've not, Marty. We cast her in... The control build we played the other day a couple of times and she was fine there. I think I unfortunately have to mulligan this since this is a basic mountain. If these are both black sources, especially an untapped black source on one, I think I'd snap this off, but I think I can do better at six on average. Sand's not stellar, but it's a keep. It's a great pickup. Gives us a... Cro Croxa is awkward in the aggressive matchups. In terms of being, in terms of how it lines up on your curve, because while Croxa has a two converted mana cost, it's not really a two drop in these matchups because it's not a two drop that impacts the board. I guess is the most most specific way to describe it. 
Just generally generally speaking, what you need to be doing on turn two, you need to be playing a card that impacts the board. We're gonna go ahead and block up Hell Collector here. I'm just passing with Bedevil up. I think it's more correct to kill the Ember Cleave than it is to kill one of their creatures. I agree, I agree Marty. Big, big agree. So that puts my fifth card in the bin, so I'm going to go ahead and play Croxa here to take a card out of their hand. And this way, if I draw a land next turn, I'm able to escape Croxa, which would be ideal. Getting getting a six six into play is uh, pretty important. They had a lava coil in hand, really rewards us for not playing a threat out here. Ain't hey, perfect. The opponent peels a cleave for like a questing beast. Maybe we could be in trouble, but I like our spot overall from here for sure. Uh, cardboard live Andrew, the extension. If they attack, just like easiest block of my life. This could be a Bone Crusher Giant Stomp, but I think I'm okay with that still. Especially with the Knight of the Ebon Legion in my hand. I think I just pass here. Sounds good, Bulletproof Pope. <sighs> I think it's just Phoenix here. That is the correct spelling, Marty. H-A-I-L-E-Y. Hello, Shevzak. Welcome. Thanks for the quarter of year. Welcome back. <laughs> Stomping time. Stomping time. I attack with just this because I'm okay with this trade and if they don't take that trade I get to kill her and then have this to block on the backswing paired with grasp of darkness yeah the mat the mat like the matches of magic that don't involve Tefri and don't involve that don't involve Tefri and don't involve Wilderness Reclamation are really good. Like magic's a sweet game when there's just like there's not, you know, the obvious glaring design mistakes from the last year bearing down on us. With larger predators. We did we did beat Reclamation in the first match though. I don't know. I think there's, I think there's a chance to, that like, part of what I need to do to get through Magic for the summer is just suspend taking deck submissions or, or I I've started I've started rejecting more aggressively too. That just might be the the case or like raise the price on them again. 
Because, like, ba basically, the, the current state of historic, my normal business model just basically doesn't work. And the format's too hostile to random things that people want to send in to pay to see played. So to keep some, some amount of magic content going over the summer, probably just want to focus on things that I think are reasonable. Wizards played the long game by trying to bring Jeff down by nerfing the Q. Yeah, exactly, you get it. I think I want a Meyer Triton here. And then next turn we can Croxa plus a one drop and then hopefully escape Croxa on... Actually, I even milled a Croxa. So I don't even need to play Croxa out here necessarily. Yeah, viewer viewer numbers have been have been super down. This was the best draw in our deck, not close. Let's get that error out of there, huh? For the 15 months, Mar, I appreciate that. Welcome back. In fact, part of part of the reason why I, you, people saw probably saw me if you follow me on Twitter, you saw me tweet about overall Twitch metrics and magic magic metrics last night. Part of, part of the reason why I was looking at that stuff is because my own metrics were down and I was looking at, looking to see if it was just a trend based on my channel or overall for the game category. I like Croxa too. Big agree. While Uro's pretty obnoxious, I feel like they really hit a pretty sweet spot in terms of Croxa, Croxa's power level. Ninja Mouse, thanks for the 10 months. Yeah, I, I agree, Roller Dude. Once, once upon a time, having the deck queue and having people submit things to the deck queue allowed this to become my job before I had enough subscribers consistently for it to actually be a real income. But with a slightly higher sub count since moving to Arena, I could probably push back and do less. Do less, uh, less viewer submissions. Correct. I agree, Bulletproof Pope. That was, that was the thing that was most most telling, in my opinion, was the fact that, like, Twitch viewership as a whole is up. Twitch viewership as a whole is up by 100% the last two months. And, like, Magic's viewership is down 25 to 30% over the same comparison. I think that's really, really pretty telling about the current feelings of the Magic formats. Morning, R.E.P. Thanks for watching. Hope you're having a good weekend. Good chance we don't get another turn here. I guess that's not strictly true. You check out Rune Terra's viewership. Uh, Rune Terra doesn't have is isn't a new enough game to have history to draw conclusions like that. Over overall, Rune Terra's average viewership is very comparable to Magic's, which honestly bodes well-ish for it, since like it's a newish game. You can I mean you, you can go look. It's all public on Sully Gnome. At least I know what the hockey is. Actually, it's so it's interesting. Um, 
one of the things that one of the metrics that Twitch shows me is that um, it gives me a metric of what other games do my viewers watch when they're not watching me. John, thanks for 17 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. And for the last week, only 38% of my viewers' non-Jeff Twitch time has been spent watching Magic. So a significant chunk of my viewers, when they're watching people who aren't me on Twitch, they're watching games that aren't Magic be played. As always, the answer to the question, will I play your deck, should be answered by using the form on my website. I don't say yes or no to things, just by people throwing things out in chat. To be fair, you make it really hard to watch other Magic streamers. That's that's fair. If you're used to the organization here, I don't think there's anybody else in the community that consistently come close to the organization that I have. Yeah, the chat experience too. Yeah, I don't I don't really visit other Twitch chats, so I guess I forget. I forget what they experience like on average, but I can definitely definitely see that. Yeah, yeah, actually, actually, that's, uh, you know, I talk about things that I do on my channel, and I try to make sure I don't do things on my channel that annoy me on other people's things, and, like, when I was watching, I watched a number of different people stream during the pre-release event on Wednesday after I was done, and the thing, I was just constantly flipping through people, because people were just constantly building decks on stream, and it's so tedious in my opinion watching people build decks on stream with their chat just screaming at them and them getting annoyed at their chat for suggesting stupid things it's like not not a pleasant viewer experience Just gonna go ahead and pump this up and smack them for six here. It's the most resource efficient play. You would enjoy a heavy dose of speed metal in the background while you play. Well, you're in luck. The thing that you are currently watching me on is a powerful computer that is capable of running two applications at the same time. So if you load up YouTube Music or Pandora or Spotify in the background, you can listen to two audio streams simultaneously because I'm not playing music in the background of my stream. And if the thing you're watching me on isn't capable of doing that, take your Apple cell phone and spike it into the garbage can and go buy a real device. Pum Daddy, thanks for the third of a year. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. What convinced me to pick up Runeterra? Uh, Wizards of the Coast earlier this year lame ducked all of their all of their constructed formats for like two weeks so it sent me looking for other things to do and i know a number of people that work on rune terra at this point from just knowing people in the magic community i was apprehensive of riot as a company for a little while because of some of their workplace issues but i've talked to people who have said that they've worked to correct those issues over the course of the last little bit so decided to give it a try
So we have lethal damage here, so I'm just going to go ahead and attack. There's no reason to blink, basically. If they have a Brazen Borrower and bounce one of my knights, I pump the other knight and kill them. But, like, they're dead on board, so there's no reason for me to blink. I should just attack. That's also, that's also true, too. Like, you know, it's, def it's definitely been brought to light that, like, you know, there's... There's basically, there's no ethical consumption under capitalism. And trying to take some kind of moral stand against a lot of these companies is largely silly because they all have issues, as we, we, we recently learned with Wizards of the Coast. You'll see, one of the things you'll frequently see me do with cards is you'll notice I dragged Rune Blaster up here to the 4 slot. This is because this card is basically a 4 drop. We're generally playing it for its kicker effect. So by moving it into the 4 slot here, it helps me visualize what my curve looks like when I'm preparing my deck for the post board to see that I have 10, 10, 8, 7. So my deck is set up here post board to curve fairly elegantly here in a game where I need to be the aggressor. The historic Grixis Kajoli can be a while back has dragged me into Diamond. Thanks for the continued content. Thanks, Gruff McGruffin. Have you, you should try, uh, you should try, uh, the worm in it. I'm forgetting its name. It's not, I almost said Ravager Worm, but that's the green red one. Massacre Worm. You should try some Massacre Worms at the top end. If we're really lucky, we'll draw a Swamp on one here. So we can lead on Night of the Ebon Legion. We played, we played Red Black Control the other day. If you didn't go back and watch the video of that, you definitely should. Um... It was very, very reasonable. Played some Massacre Worms at the top end. Alright, this is one turn late, but better late than never. Think we're remorsing here before they can Growth Spiral into Wilder's Reclamation. Love Struck Beast. Let's clear that one out. Morning Forest. Wouldn't be too surprised to see them uh, draw two here with Thassa's Intervention. Yep. Yeah, they do have two Thassa's Intervention in hand. Again, Magic Arena is bugged because it's a poorly written piece of software. Trying its hardest, yep. It's really kind of sad in a way. Because, like, I had so much optimism for this application. And they just, like, very thoroughly spiked it all the way into the garbage can. Yeah, yeah, they did do did do an Oracle update on Meyer Triton here, which is reflected on Magic Arena and Magic Online. I wouldn't be too surprised to just get this as intervention. All right, that's a lot of pressure here. Under pressure. Four cards in here. This is a fantastic draw. Show me all secrets. One of which I know is Thassa's Intervention because Magic Arena. We're going to get Blast Zoned here anyways. Oh, our 
opponent doesn't have any spells, chat. I would normally say I feel bad for them, but you're playing Nexus of Fate, so you deserve every minute of what you're currently experiencing. So anyways, chat, I came in blasting. How long am I going to be live for today? Planning to be up for about four, four and a half hours. My plan, my plan for the foreseeable future is to do, um, let's think here for a second. So this is worth 10 down to five. Next turn, they're going to get to play Tamio and pick up Root Snare, which probably means I want to keep the Rune Blaster so I can kill the Azkanta here. I think I, I think I keep this. Sorry, my plan for the foreseeable future is to do two historic decks per day and one Rune Terra deck per day. So about three hours of magic and about an hour and a half of Rune Terra. And do that, do that for a week or so and see how we feel after. I think a Bone Crusher Giants might be wrong. The moon looks intriguing tonight. Stomp is very good against Root Snare. No tail should be discarded. The Chandra's at the top end of the curve of this deck might just be silly. Fit some Bone Crushers in over those and something else. Do I get another turn opponent? I think you will find my notes helpful. Really, really glad they banned Winota in this format. Really, really glad they banned Winota. Definitely, definitely a net positive. Definitely a net positive for the format. Just don't need these libations. Just like try and keep Reclamation out with discard spells. It's probably not unreasonable. If Rune Blaster 2 to attack their mana, Liliana to attack their hand at Cruxa.
I agree, Marty. So someone on someone on Twitter asked me, well, Jeff, what would you do if you were in charge of Historic? I think as of right now, I would ban Wilderness Reclamation, Tefri, and Arboreal Grazer. If you said, okay, Jeff, how would how would you manage the format if you think it needed to be managed? Those would be those would be my picks. Hey, thanks for the five months, Coley. Thanks for introducing me to Runeterra. I'm not giving Arena any more money until there's more diversity. There's a bigger card pull in Historic. Have you tried any decks of the new Brahm yet? We've not, but we had someone send in... Had someone send in for that. So I think we're going to get to it tomorrow, I believe. I think Uro is fine without those cards. Possibly. I think I think I would I would make those changes and then take a look at the format and see what it looks like. Like magic, magic tends to be really complicated on average, and like trying to predict, predict too much is nonsense. I think I want to offer this trade kind of aggressively here because my opponent's a Goblin Chain Whirler deck almost assuredly. I did, Judge Nader. I didn't update the deck here. I do that after my streams usually. Von Gripper, thanks for the months. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Looking for an untapped land here. So that way we can go Phoenix in tonight, hit them for four, trigger this. Sounds good, Roller Dude. It's probably another matchup where having a big Bone Crusher Giant in the format is, uh, there in my deck is good. Something, so I think that's kind of a, a neat commentary on the format as a whole and like how metagames impact other decks that aren't directly being targeted is Mono Red actually incidentally gets better in Historic because they banned Winota. So because they banned Winota, this archetype has to play against less red cat melees. Which is... uh. Which ends up making it better as an archetype. Hey, awesome panda. I'm glad you're enjoying it. escaping this and then playing defense this turn cleave me daddy Never not dead to cleave. Whoa, that just happened. Well then. If they play Croxa, I get to cast it. So like them playing Croxa here is probably very wrong. I think this is the correct play from them. I think we're dead because of the Castle Embrith here. I have to go trade, trade, take five down to one.
Our mid-range deck is notably worse against the opponent's archetype because we're trying to hedge more, uh, more the more ramp decks in the format. So, like, you'll note there I died with an Agonizing Remorse in my hand, which is in my main deck in large part because um, things like Nexus are very popular in the format, but very bad in the aggressive matchups. Adriano, thanks for the 10 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. I want to trim here. Liliana is probably just not very good. Pretty good curve there. Bottoming the Croxa here because it's a two drop that doesn't impact the board. Obviously need to draw a third land for this hand to do anything, but it's just how it goes sometimes. As far as non-land draws go, that one's definitely towards the top. Look at that. We skillfully milled two non-lands. Clear the way to the third land to play the rest of our hand would be great. Dead Jim, you've killed him. Feels magic, man. Feels, feels magic, man. My deck and its damn greedy two color mana base. Prof. Dr. Mr. P thinks there's 17 months. There's just like, and that's the that's the extra like jaded jading part or like tough part or frustrating part about wilderness reclamation and stuff like that. Like Magic already has an incredible number of non games in it, like that one we just played, and then like when you add to that fact that like on top of the incredible number of non games, there's also games where like your deck's functional but you're playing against wilderness reclamation so you still are frustrated Fox. Yeah, the aggro deck will be up, be up next. It's stomping time. Man, I hope they play a Thought Erasure next turn. I can't tell if that's, like, rude or if I'm just, like, pretty okay with that. I feel like the answer is I'm pretty okay with it. Bushi, thanks for the seven months. I appreciate it. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Delve everything except the Phoenix here. I agree, Zach. Big, big agree. Enter the God Eternals. Yep. 
So opponent is just like on the never beat wilderness reclamation plan, feels like. How about if I put them down to one card in hand? So we'll attack with this. They'll discard. We'll play this, make them discard. I can also escape Phoenix here, but I think I'd rather just take cards out of their hand. Let that one in chat there be a warning shot to the non-subs. That wasn't a timeout. I just banned that person for presenting a... If you present a lazy, stupid opinion, I'm going to give you a timeout. If you present a lazy, stupid opinion while also being rude, I'm going to ban you. That'll, that'll be the rule. Super, super easy to follow. How do I want to board here? This is probably a grasp of darkness. Yeah, plus no sub. Subs will get subs get plenty of leeway. It takes a lot for me to ban a sub. Usually, usually subs have to be outright, outright hostile or rude. Degrading, racist, bigoted. Those will those will get subs banned. Is it crazy to not have Agonizing Remorse here? I kind of feel like this is probably a matchup where we need to play to the board. So I think I'm going to cut these and bring two Bedevils in. Lily Bovine, thanks for the brand new Prime Support. I appreciate that. Welcome to Hoglandia. Thanks for keeping me around. That's been, been fine. It's had some normal Magic Sucks experiences, but in terms of like lining up and other things in the format, it's felt like reasonably competitive. When we're When we're playing Magic, it's felt competitive. good enough it's probably good enough opponents a thought erasure deck almost assuredly so the threshold for hands that you keep against thought erasure decks is uh is tends to be lower you just like want something functional yeah i, I think the the format right now is like four main deck agonizing remorse is a pretty good place to be Uh, Ahmad made a command for historic changes I would make, right? What was the command? What would Jeff be? And there you go. That's perfect. I can remember that one. Poor little light. You were so young. What are spells? Baby, don't hurt me. That was a good draw. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Liliana gonna get to kill her first creature of the set which is fantastic she gets something minus x minus x where x is the number of cards in our graveyard here of which we have plenty 
introduce me as Queen of the Dead. Oh, I totally missed that the mod that made that command said said Hero of Hearthstone. That's so fantastic. Subs are great, chat. Your subs are great. Get to discard Croxa and then escape it right away here. It's just good clean deck building. Let's kill this idiot. He's been good, Lucas. These these red black mid range and control decks have actually felt like pretty okay in this format. I was like, why are they taking that? They just want to, uh... Uh, the Nexus matchups have felt bad, but they also haven't felt unwinnable, which is about right. Like, the Nexus matchup basically always feels bad. Part of why Nexus is so offensive. Let me know if you're up for one or two. I have no interest in fighting fair. The Tefri countdown. It uh The Tefri countdown, we took it away because it's never leaving this format. Wow! We have been playing Magic for an hour and two minutes, and the client is already starting to lag and black screen at the end of matches. Just like, good lord, Wizards of the Coast. And for reference, in case, in case anybody is new here, I have an i7 processor and a 2080 super graphics card and 32 gigs of RAM. The issue here is not my hardware. It is the software quality that is Magic Arena. I think debating ways they could have made Tefri not suck is stupid and pointless because they're not going to errata the card and it's already printed and it already sucks. Human, okay? This is another matchup where, again, I've elected to play Agonizing Remorse in my main deck to hedge specific types of matchups. And now we're running into the opposite spectrum of the matchup, so game ones, we're having a hard time here. Alright, this just like exiles my graveyard too. Yeah, we're super dead. And this is this is the problem with trying to play a mid-range interactive deck like what we're playing in a format like Historic, which again is why I think formats like Historic tend to be at their best when decks that creature removal is good against are the primary threats in the format. So like someone was asking, like, how has this been against Wilderness Reclamation? It's like, well, it's not been unwinnable, but like at the same time, the way I've skewed and changed my deck to give it an okay Reclamation matchup makes us much worse in all these game ones against anything, anybody playing anything that's attacking. You're basically, basically punting game one somewhere no matter what you do when you play a deck like this. 
And it, this is why, this is one of the kind of fundamental design problems with Magic as a game, is that it's generally speaking game theory optimal to play a linear deck as opposed to an interactive deck in Magic. Because whenever you play an interactive deck, you run the risk of your interaction not lining up while it drawing dead or being inefficient. So, could have crocs it on two there, but I think they're pretty likely to play a two drop on two, and being able to stomp into play Bone Crusher out is an ideal curve. Do I have emotes turned off? I believe so. Yeah. I mean. It's not really that Democrats are pushing to make D.C. a state so much as the people who live in D.C. are pushing to have representation since they pay taxes to the U.S. government. My, my understanding is the vote in D.C. had 80% support for D.C. having statehood because, well, it should be a state. It has more people that live there than several states in the United States. Seth, thanks for the half year. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Yeah, if, if we have a blue wave in the fall and we get a Democratic president and uh, Senate control as well and we get statehood for both of those for both of those places, that would be huge for Puerto Rico and D.C., Especially because if we add if we add more senators, it then becomes harder for Republicans to regain control. The non-American here, do people in Washington not to get to vote? They don't they don't have any senators in the they don't have any people anyone in the Senate, no. Yeah, DC gets a non-voting rep. Making making them a state would give them two senators just like every other state. Of course the US has second class citizens. That's why there's protests going on. That's pretty good. I mean, cleaning up a bunch of debt that the Republicans left behind is kind of par for the course when a Democrat gets elected. If you look at, look at things historically speaking. Need to draw a removal spell for the sausage shaker here. And we're dead. I guess I can do this and I could draw a grasp of darkness. Yeah, they can cast Stomp, and then they can cast Bone Crusher off their Ancient Ziggurat. God, it is just... Ugh... <sighs>
I see it's fine. Hold on, we're gonna tweet. After the latest Magic Arena patch, the client is starting to hang slash lag from leaking memory after just one hour of gameplay on my i7 8700K processor, 32 gigs of RAM, and a 2080 Super Graphics card. This application really is a shell of its former self. Send tweet. Okay, I think it's important to agonize your remorse on two here before they growth spiral into reclamation. Uh, I don't have Google Fiber, but I have Fiber Internet. Uh, I think with four stomps in my deck, I'm going to leave them the root stone. I'm going to take their drawn from dreams, which could generate card advantage here. just Triton plus Knight here. The extra 32 bits are weighing down the client, right? I am using a Windows system right now. I'm on Windows 10. So I can't I can't even write off Magic Random Arena issues anymore as well. Maybe it's just a wine issue and it's not actually Arena's fault. No, it's definitely Arena's fault. I'm playing on basically as vanilla as a setup as they could get. day is going to feel great. And Liliana, Liliana chewing up their hands here. And then Lily, Liliana plus Croxa will even pressure their life total through, through their other things, which is nice. I think it's just Meyer Triton out now. We're boarding a little bit differently than we did last time because I've got four Bone Crusher Giants, but I think this setup looks good. I'm gonna mulligan that hand because the man is a little awkward. I 
I see, I see people in chat still talking about, like, the national debt and, like, I don't know, money as a whole is, like, all just kind of a crock, right? Like, look at, look at what the stock market has done giving itself basically whiplash over the last, last however long it's been. It's all, it's all, it's all, all the points are made up and none of it really matters, Chef. Step, step one, be lucky. Step two, don't be unlucky. Interesting note here on Liliana Waker of the Dead. She's templated similar to Croxa in that while my opponent has Tamio in play, Liliana's plus one simply deals three damage to our opponent. Do not harm my scrolls. This is the part where they plus name Nexus of Fate and then we never get another turn. Seek and find. <laughs> It's like have another Nexus in hand already. I don't intend to do it for... I don't intend to do it for the Hoglandia Open this month that we're going to have on the 18th. Um, and... But I think past that, we might explore some community ban list for our Opens moving forward. Wizards ain't going to manage their shit. We'll do it for them. We keep the Rune Blaster. It's kind of a form of pseudo interaction. Milling Crocs are there. Makes me sad that I kept the Crocs in hand. Is there really turn four Ugin? There's turn four Ugin in standard. Of course there's turn four Ugin in this format. Okay. 
Hey, thank you for the very generous tier 3 Pentreon. I appreciate the 17 months. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. I agree that Jumpstart does not seem likely to fix any of the fundamental problems Historic is currently experiencing. December Black, thank you for the entire year's support. Let's get you a sword to go with that shield. Welcome back. The Weather Lady, thanks for the 17 months. Appreciate you keeping me around. Pretty sure we're stomping the human... Let them scry here, thinking they're keeping the human token. But it doesn't have a lot going on other than Wilderness Reclamation, so we got that going for us. Uh, I think you could describe a lot of issues with Historic right now, but I think describing... Describing Burning Tree Emissary as an issue with current historic, I think, shows a pretty fundamental misunderstanding of what the problems are. I think, I think, if anything, Burning Tree Emissary is one of the few things that can really apply pressure to check some of the greed that exists in this format currently. Because I don't think Grawl was ever actually that strong. I think as more people have started to care about Historic, it became more apparent that Grawl was never that good. Never cross paths again. I think the Grawl deck was largely preying upon... was largely preying upon unoptimized piles that weren't particularly good to start with. Oh good, and they have an Uro, which is just infinitely better than my Croxa. That's true too. The there was a Grawl Obosh configuration. That was good for hot that seemed okay for a hot second, and then they nerfed companions. Because the companion nerf it disproportionately impacts aggro decks compared to mid-range and control decks. This is a good draw, huh? Takes the Uro out, so I decided not to do that. They scry top or bottom, should we mill them? Let me just check the game log really quick. I wasn't paying attention. Oh, what's that? There's no game log, weird.
So, I'm pretty sure the white fist emote I just got rid of is intended to be a Boros symbol. But maybe we can step back and have some self-reflection in the current political climate and conclude that raised white fists aren't emoticons we should probably be posting anywhere. Thanks. Let's also not belittle important social movements like Black Lives Matters by trying to make light of them by saying things like Boros Lives Matters. Also not welcome in my chat. Thanks. This game's a fantastic example of the level of helplessness and lack of player agency these games tend to play out. We had a ton of meaningful disruption this game. We had our opponent down to essentially nothing. They untapped, they drew Tamiyo, and now the game is over. We can basically no longer win. Alright, they missed. We have a shot here. If this isn't Nexus, they, they topped this card. So this could just be an Nexus of Fate. Holy gosh. All right. Nah, let's try to kill him. <laughs> is it? Is it magic fun? I'm having fun. Why aren't we having fun, chat? Are you enjoying yourself, chat? Ah! Kraxa is lethal here. I'm gonna tie the people out for being incorrect. There are only five cards in my bin, not six. Don't worry, chat. We'll get him next turn. <laughs> imagine, imagine thinking there's gonna be a next turn. <laughs> uh... Oh, that's a good catch. We could have, we could have kept the. Sweet. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. The devil's in the details. Okay, so we punted that. If we keep if we keep this one and this one dies to the legend roll, we would have had exactly enough to escape it there. And remember, chat, it's not about being right or wrong. It's the way in which you're right or wrong. So I don't care that you were right, but the fact that you didn't share with me how you were right, that's the thing that matters. And honestly, like... I don't know, like, maybe, I, I, I'm really torn, because, like, games like that, I'm definitely playing worse, because I feel bad the entire time we're playing, just, like, the entire experience of sitting there playing isn't fun, and it's frustrating, but, like, at the same time, it's like, well, am I just supposed to concede all these matchups, or am I just supposed to concede every other match that we play, basically, while we're on the ladder? Yeah, yeah, it's just like, well, maybe, maybe maybe that's just the case. I don't know. Part, part of me, too, like, I don't, like, I haven't formalized all the details of cool stuffing. Part of me, honestly, doesn't want to run and open this month. Like, all of these formats kind of suck. I don't really want to spend all day doing commentary on a tournament where the end rounds are going to be a bunch of Nexus of Fate. I kind of like don't have a desire to sit through that part of part of the reason why I've changed my schedule up to like part of the reason why I've changed my schedule up to I've changed my schedule up to do shorter days is because sitting through more than three hours of magic is just, it's tough like these formats are just really bad as someone who's played magic 
for 20 years these are the worst magic formats that i've played in a long time and it's especially frustrating because they were so good and so reasonable for a long time so the tip pentreon i appreciate it all right where's my alert box sorry for the peak twitch chat thanks for the tip I don't know. I was like, so like I took like a two week break and like I was hoping to feel refreshed when I come back. But like, even with the new set, it's just like, like this deck was fine, I guess. But like magic happened and we lost some games and then reclamation happened and even games that we won kind of sucked. And it's like, I don't, I don't know. I just, I feel really lost and it's kind of, it's kind of frustrating and yeah. Unmoored Ego should be the most played card in Historic right now. Unmoored Ego isn't even that good against the Reclamation decks. Good, good Reclamation players. Good Reclamation players aren't, aren't getting beaten by Unmoored Egos. It's just like the, the long and short of it TLDR. Like they could, they could win games without, without the Nexus of Fate. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, and then the software issues aren't helping either. All right. I don't really have any feedback on this. I think I like where we ended up at. I think if you want to play a mid-range deck, this felt fine, I guess. But mid-range in general is a tough sell in this format, and it's just, it's tough. We're going to do one more magic deck today. I'm going to slog through two. We got some Mardu aggro here. Coming up next, I'm going to hit a quick ad roll while I get the client restarted because it's hemorrhaging memory. We'll be back in just a few. Thanks for hanging out today, folks.